What's up, guys? Favorite executive producer. Well, self-proclaimed self-producer. Today on Look, Don't Touch, we're on the set of a giant mural that is being painted in the background by Mona Carone, who is a Switzerland slash San Franciscan transplant based artist who will be coming down to talk about uh, muralism and will also be joined by Sint, who is a graffiti artist. And we'll be discussing the contrast between graffiti artists and muralists in terms of street art. As you can see in, my, in the background, she's coming down off the scaffold and she'll be joining us momentarily. So for those who need to understand what street art is, street art um, obviously can be considered anything from a holistic standpoint as a painting, a mural, a graffiti. Street art, or what we like to call uh, urban art, is illegal, right? That's not done with permission. And so we're going to dive deeper into the intricacies of you know, what it entails, uh, the unwritten rules of street art, muralism, the creative process, and what goes into that. Hey, Mona, how's it going? Hi. How are you? Mona is a Swiss muralist who's also a San, Francis San Franciscan transplant, but I don't want to steal her spotlight. I would love for you to give a intro on yourself. Okay, so... Again, my name is Mona Caron, and um, I, yeah, San Francisco based, but in recent years, kind of a nomad, sort of re leading a little bit of a nomadic lifestyle, going to from place to place, sprouting these giant weeds, as they, I call them, <laughs> rewilding urbanity with, uh, with wild plants, I guess. It's what I've been doing recently, so... Now I define myself as an artist because I, I really do, as a visual artist specifically, because like my range is actually wider than what I usually gave myself credit to. It's like um, I do really think of all, all aspects of visual impact in everything that I do. So basically visual artist, right? But um, I mostly do murals. That's what I'm mostly known for. And um, the rest of the stuff that I do has to do with my murals. So okay. I think that's kind of the central focus for sure. Okay, so uh, I guess talk to us a little bit more about, you know, you mentioned the weed and the wildflower. So talk to us about, you know, Fido graffiti. And for those who are listening and watching, Fido is another word for a plant. Mona's specialty is um, around you know a weed wildflower if you will yeah no these are what i do is kind of what i call them sort of heroic portraits you know of of uh of weeds really or of wild plants and basically plants that are you i would sometimes like to call them autonomous plants plants that choose where they want to grow like they don't get told by some gardener uh, where to grow. They just do whatever they feel like. And they, they kind of grow outside of the normal confines that humans make for their gardens and stuff. They just come up by themselves. And that kind of like um, uh, toughness and, and independence and resilience is a little bit of a metaphor for what I think um, it's kind of really a, a human metaphor. It's a little bit celebrating... Uh, all the beings, plant or human or otherwise, <laughs> that, um, you know, maybe are not as visible as some of the other ones, like all the, all the beings that have, did not have a little gar garden plot made for them, all the beings that um, push through and the more they can step on, get stepped on, the harder they grow back. And it's also a way, metaphorically, in which I sort of imagine real positive change to happen is is like um you know like the collective action of nature pushing pushing through the cement and the concrete all these hard things that seem invincible you know the fact that a little plant can do that they find a little crack in the cement or in the in the pavement and they push through and they start to widen that crack and allow for more water to come back to the earth and open the path for the whole nature to follow. So it's kind of the the small things can that can overcome huge odds, you know. Also, 
originally this project started a little differently now i got invited to paint these plants you know <laughs> at the time when i started i was really what i was doing I, is i would go mostly to rooftops actually because i had sort of piece and then i would draw uh, stop frame animations of weeds growing on the rooftops of, of San Francisco, especially the Tenderloin area of San Francisco and other places uh, that I would travel to. And I often picked spots that that embodied precisely that kind of collective resilience. Like you know, I got to go to Barcelona and there's this amazing anarchist squad there called Camasdeo and like and how they just had to go through all sorts of things and they're just tenaciously held on to that space and made it beautiful and turned it into a utopia and I felt like oh I, I painted a stinging nettle on their place you know like so basically I used to choose um, locations that typify the kind of resilience that I'm talking about you know as, as a metaphor for that but those were little plants you know just little as big as me maybe not much you know like that you know <laughs> it's a different that's a different deal yeah um, I wanted to talk to you about kind of what made you go in the direction of murals versus kind of being a graffiti artist do you consider yourself technically a graffiti artist i cannot claim that term for myself because graffiti um as it's understood in in the united states not so in in other languages but in in english it really is related to spray can art urban art of a specific tradition that i have no claim to you know what i mean because i I'm not a spray can artist and I have tremendous respect. I, I do use spray cans. I've done entire murals with spray cans, but like I'm good friends in San Francisco. I know some amazing graffiti artists. I know how they handle the can. I bow to them. I will never, you know, they're, you know, I'm not that. I'm not that. So I can't, I, it will be posing for me to say, oh yeah, I do graffiti. It's not true. I'm not, that's not my background. I'm very much a brush, a brush person. And, and my origin is a little bit different, you know? So, uh, and also I had, had didn't always paint the weeds. I used to have other themes in which I very much, they were kind of the opposite. Like now I do little plants, huge. And back then I did large neighborhoods, little, like in, in like miniature details. When telling the story of everybody in the neighborhood and like the past, present and future, future imaginings of, of our space, our neighborhood. Those are the kinds of murals that I used to do. And I've always, I've always been about the message and the weeds message is more subtle and more cross-cultural. Like it reaches people that don't even speak my language, you know. Uh, but before it used to be a little more literal, which is was about together with a community, painting a mural, imagining how we can change this for the better. So like I did a series of murals in San Francisco that were all about where are we? This is the neighborhood. I, I would like paint my mural in the mural to show where we're at. Right? So, so we were here, we were here. Like what did, you, did this neighborhood used to look like? So I would have a bird's eye view of the past and then the present, the way people would tell me it was. I would include hundreds of miniature, de miniature portraits of, of neighbors that would come up with me and be in it. And letting the street like really uh, dictate the social geography of the place, not my decision. They place themselves in the murals. Like, put me over here, I hang out at this corner. Cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not at the other corner, because other people hang out at their corner. You know what I mean? Like, it's specific. So there's, there's territories, there's also the things that are important. Mm -hmm. So I used to love just letting the neighborhood tell itself through my murals and being the medium. And, and then imagine together another way. You know, literally I have a mural in which I have um, a street with a one-way sign, and then, you know, and then in the next panel it's like another way sign, and it's how we want to change it. And once again, not my decision. I would ask people, you know, how could this be? How could this be different? And the the painting will be the collective collection of the for the funniest, kookiest ideas to the really right on smart, wise ones, everything was represented in there. And once again, like the weeds, this collective coming together of a lot of energies transforming a whole neighborhood, you know? And just like, and that's what the weeds do, is like how, how does nature win against the things that seem invincible? 
you know, invincible like pff, capitalism seems invincible. You know <laughs> it might mean? be. It might be close. <laughs> seems. It might be close. It might be close. It might be close. But like like holding on to that thing is like everything seemed, you know, wasn't it Ursula Le Guin or something who said something like, you know, capitalism seems invincible uh, and so seem to be the divine right of kings or something along those lines she used to say like that too seemed impossible to ever overcome and it took centuries but eventually we overcame i'm hoping so <laughs> <laughs> my praxis as an artist used to be very much rooted like in this dialogue with the community this meant time like time as in weeks months spent in one place really talking to people getting to know everything everybody and and having the work reflect that now that i'm you know like next week i'm in switzerland and i have a project in brazil and everything once you have that kind of life it's re really risky to lose that connection to place and an opportunity to do that and i definitely don't want to become the sort of like parachute in and out you know like just come in put your signature back on the wall and you know and leave because I don't have a huge respect of that like I used to have a little bit of a critique of that kind of thing you know <laughs> but now that I'm kind of guilty of it a little bit no I'm not really doing that I still think I don't really do that quite because like I am interested in the place and I do like even with the plants I'm even though I have sort of a, a universal metaphor going on there that people can interpret in various ways, I do research the location, the territory, the place. This plant here is, of course, it's called a Joe Pye weed, but it's actually a native plant, very much native to, to here, and has an interesting, and I'm going to rename it for this mural, Shakith Kwat Yensi which is going to be <laughs> impossible to pronounce. <laughs> but you know why? Because like Joe Pai, who was Joe Pai? And you start digging mm -hmm. and like it turns out there's like some sort of apocryphal story about, oh, the Native American medicine man that cured somebody of typhus with this plant, you know? It's one of those feel-good stories like Thanksgiving. It's like, isn't it nice? You know, the <laughs> Indians used to yeah. cure us white people of all the areas, <laughs> you know? Then they give it the name like that. And it's it's like... Probably that did not really happen. However, they did research, and apparently the person did exist. Uh, and sh you know, Shakyithquat was the actual name of Joe Pai, which is Joseph Pai was the Christian name the, that this medicine um, uh, phytotherapist yep. had. Uh, and and it's like one of the rare de invisibilization of of you know of the Native Americans and somehow like relating that back to the land and back to this, I thought was an opportunity here. You made an interesting point. So uh, as you know, Sent will be joining us, who's a local graffiti artist. And so uh, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, yin and yang of graffiti and you know, being a muralist and, you know, we can jump into being, you know, what a street artist is. And I know it's a little bit different, but from, you know, from a macro picture, it's all kind of considered street art. But, you know, you mentioned, you know, leaving your name. And do you feel that because I want to talk about the unwritten rules of graffiti and tagging. And as soon as Scent gets here, but do you feel a type of way if a graffiti artist comes to your mural and tags it or tags over it well the thing is that like a lot of my earlier murals that i was telling you about that reflect the reflect the neighborhood and everything contain literally like a hundred mini tags because i i will get to know everybody and i i'd have i meet all the taggers and i used to have this book it's like oh can i have i i would start by copying the tags i would see on poles street poles and stuff and putting them mini on the mural like in, per in perspective like they look like they're painted on the wall and people was like whoa that's my tag can you put my friend's tag and so like they would show me their tag and i would put it in perspective in the wall so my my cityscapes in these old murals uh have hundreds of actual tags of everybody in the neighborhood represented in it and while all the commercial store signs are altered to uh, have sort of an ironic uh, twist on, on their name sort of like slightly sort of sardonic twist on what they actually represent all these places you know 
like Western Union Bank becomes something else. It's kind of like a comments about what they are, you know. So all the all the commercial signs are altered, and all the graffiti are real, or we are or real. But I I mean, I often paint them, but but for some reason that that kept a lot of graffiti off of my those murals have not really gotten tagged much. But I've been doing murals for a long, long time. After a while, they fade. After a and then they start getting tagged and everything. It's part of the you know. It's it's. Um, is it always like an expiration date? No, not necessarily, but sometimes nature takes over. Uh, it's not even humans; it's nature taking over, and um, that's mostly what happens with murals: is they fade, they fall apart. Water comes in, infiltrates from the back. If it's a retaining wall, forget it. You've just done a completely, <laughs> you know vanishing piece and uh, all these kinds of things I've learned that murals will go. Other murals that are on good substrate can stay forever. In fact, I've had the amazing honor, kind of crazy actually, is like I've had professional conservators like uh, Kiernan Graves, who is this conservator who like restores frescoes in Italy and like ancient Indian palaces and like Chinese whatever ancient stuff she uh, like led a team of people and works for the Getty Museum and stuff and she led a team of people restoring one of my super hyper detailed murals in <laughs> in San Francisco uh, literally with dental tools and like syringes injecting things in the back to stick the painting back on the wall and things like that. They did an unbelievable work because those those murals of mine are miniature, detailed, extremely intricate, no? So they, they treated it essentially like that. Exactly, so they did preserve that. And again, like those kinds of murals, like those areas don't get tagged. And so the tags are in there, but painted in the mural, right? So. I guess what goes into the planning uh, of a mural of a mural of this caliber, how do you plan this at scale? Um, well, I sketch it out. And um, do you want to know in detail how yes, I do it? Yes, I want to know. You want to know every deal. Okay, so uh, there's going to be an advertisement for a technological device in there. Is that okay? <laughs> so an iPad. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I know I hate the being the Apple flag waver, so, but I you got know, my Apple watch. This, this thing is I know. So, so there's that. So anyway, Procreate and the the being able to draw on an iPad has kind of revolutionized the way I do things because I've used every technique. Like I've tried everything of of how to transfer drawings on on walls. Mm -hmm. And like classic, there's like the grid, you know, like s little squares. Oh my God, that used to be so laborious doing like little squares on the <laughs> wall and like measure. And it's the stupidest way to do it. Like that's what they actually teach you how the ancients used to do their frescoes and stuff. Mm. They will grid it out and you have a drawing that corresponds to the grid, you know, and so you draw corresponding amount. That's the stupidest thing. You don't know how many times <laughs> you work for three hours really hard and you go like, oh, wait a minute, that is D17, not D16. And so you work for three hours starting the wrong corner of the wrong square and you wasted all your time. And so like when I started doing this thing, like the sort of like a freehand grid or doodle grid, that's really the, be the best way to go and do this because you can't get lost. There's only w one little squiggle there's only one place where there's a squiggle and a peace sign and an eyeball and a fish and a star and a triangle. Got you know it. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, uh, so you can't get lost. Whereas, um, so when I, when I discovered this way, I ceremoniously took my, my uh, measuring tape and I dumped it into the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, never again measure anything, you know? So, so that's, that's kind of great. So basically what I do is I, uh, you draw on a photograph of the building and uh, you put a doodle grid on it uh, you put your drawing on top of that digitally mm -hmm. and use that as a map it's very basic it it's very simple <laughs> i always wanted to know yeah. because one you're using a lot of machinery and it does sound so simple but i know this is not simple 
No, it, it's actually really simple. But going up there, they don't know what people don't know. You said, you, you know, you've been facing winds and oh, you've been well, sw swaying from side yeah, to yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then there's that. There's rain, there's tornadoes, there's like hurricanes. So what happens there's when you combine all of these factors when you're when you're painting? The other day, we had winds. Winds can be... There's wind and wind. There's turbulent wind that lifts you off the wall, and it's like that's like where you need to immediately descend and like change your underwear or something. <laughs> it's like it's the, that's really scary, and bad things can happen. But if like the wind is constant, then it's just swaying. It's kind of like it's just swaying predictably left to right, and you can totally take advantage of that. The other day I was here, and I was doing these horizontals over there, like those horizontal edges uh -huh. and I just like would wait be over on the on the left hold the brush I didn't move the wind just pulled the brush over it was beautiful I love that stuff like I, I love like using the dynamics of the thing to do my lines and um, there's entire murals where I would have two people actually like that is possible two people on the swing stage or somebody with two remotes um, operating the platform and like the one I did in Taiwan had a lot of plants with sort of very vertical sort of sinews. Yeah, so like those stems, I would just load my brush, my wide skinny brush, and I would go like, okay, go. And like they would descend and I would just keep the brush on the wall, keep the brush on for like seven stories later, I'd go like, okay, run out of paint. Cool. And then like, cool. and it's great because then I'm just there like that and I go left and right and left and right but I'm doing like this long line that's my favorite way to work that's awesome yeah but I um I saw that the one that you did in Taiwan yeah. and it's beautiful Thank you. um so uh, I guess we're on that. so I guess since we're on that topic you can't choose this one and I have a feeling you might say the San Francisco one. Oh, I know it's coming what has been your favorite piece that you've done so far oh jeez like actually i knew you were gonna ask this and i should have prepared because now i need to think and use your minutes here while while people are listening or watching you can search on instagram just to see for yourself oh man i don't really know you know what it is i don't have a favorite mural i have favorite experiences like for example like some of my murals are my favorite murals because i had the most fun doing them it's like uh, pretty much anything I've ever done in Brazil has been so much fun. And it's not always my greatest work, but I had so much fun doing it. <laughs> so, um, so they, but that matters that it, that it becomes your favorite murals because it's attached to that thing. Each mural is a birth. It's a piece of my life. And I'm, you know, at my age, I'm just aware there's only so many pieces like this that I have in me. Right. So each one is a chunk of my life. And so a lot of it matters in terms of like what is the experience while doing it because it's not the result it's it's the experience and the result you know that matters to me I love that. how's that for an evasive i love theory? it uh, that, that, that was good <laughs> i didn't expect that one i threw in a curveball because everyone says my new one is, is my favorite yeah. one well so yeah my new one's my favorite one yeah uh, it is no that is awesome so I wanted to get your perspective on street art like Banksy, where people, well, it's not necessarily like graffiti, it's not necessarily a mural. It's like when someone's painting like a balloon or a stencil or something, or it could be a fence. Um, how do you classify that in the, in the lane of, of, of street art? I mean, literally, there are scholars about these questions, you know. So, like, I have limited, um, how do you say, authority to speak on the matter, precisely because, uh, you know, because I'm not a graffiti artist, etc. But I do know that there are terms that are uh, that are contentious. Street art, what does it mean? And urban art is another term that has been used to distinguish itself from street art, because there's those who say like street art is in the street done in the street done importantly illegally right and no which is an important part of the expression that's not a bad thing that is actually part of the art it's it's a very urgent affirmation of your existence under those conditions and it comes out from a particular context that is very specific 
and not everybody from every class can just have that or be that you know what I mean like you have to be in a certain context for that to be real you know like I'm a freaking you know privileged European a privileged immigrant I would say you know I'm, I'm you know like I'm an immigrant from Switzerland the richest country in the world even though my, my parents are penniless it doesn't matter like I grew up with tremendous privilege and uh, in a more way comparatively more pampered type of situation I have a different type of context within me I cannot say that I'm like street art according to this definition you know to the street art street art can be used people use it all the time so sometimes I just say that just for shorthand or something but if you want to be specific I'm not that then there's urban art the people is a term that people came up to kind of describe the other things you know like exa exactly like like Banksy or or no Banksy would actually also be street art and that's him because he's it's illegal etc but like for more legal mural festival type stuff you know um, and so then there's there's that term too and there's all sorts of criticism and things I find it silly because like I know there's a lot of oh what's real and what's not real obviously as somebody who does something else which is I think more close to muralism really I am grateful for the open-mindedness of people and accepting different forms of expression even when they come from different places you know and uh, everything can be valid and and in terms of being real let's be real to your origins and who you are you know just as I said I will never I will never pose as a graffiti artist because yep. that's n false that will be me posing and hoping I wish I were that cool I'm not I'm something else I'm something else so like we all have our context we all have our place where we can express something this thing about the plants is something that runs deep not just within me within my families for generations there's a long story there having to do with plants it feels authentic to me you know from the context where I was born and grew up in yes. yeah Yay! <laughs> this is Mona Carone. Mona, she's, she's oh, yeah. standing this mural behind nice us. You. Great to meet you. Oh man, awesome job. <laughs> well, we're still working on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sent. Uh, please give yourself a uh, warm introduction, background. Um. Okay. Um, my name is Sent. Um, I represent PFE Crew, CM Mob. Uh, LTD among a few. Um, I've been writing since 1989. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Um, so I've been doing this for over 30 years. Uh, I've worked for Fat Beats, uh, a couple record labels. Um, so I also do have a background in music, as far well, as hip hop, more likely. Um, and still doing my thing, I still paint. Uh, I'm still in the streets. I do murals. I, I run a gallery here in Newark, and um, here I am, connected with you guys. Appreciate you. No, appreciate you guys. Um, so we were actually talking about kind of um, does Mona consider herself a graffiti artist? And she was just saying like no, um, because it's a specific kind of style. And so. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what is graffiti as a whole, right? Because um, I, don't, I don't think people really understand what it is. For me, I know it's a style of art, but it's also a way of uh, communication. And I feel like it's very expressive. Yes. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about, you know, why is graffiti, I know it's illegal, but why does it have a negative connotation versus murals have more of like a positive connotation? All right, well, here's my outlook on, you know, uh, m like, mural art, what, what's what the commissions are done, um, street art, and graffiti. Mm -hmm. Street art is more, uh, has a uh, more graphic, graphic orientated, I believe. You okay. Know, of, of course, you have messages, and um, it's, not, it's been towards, more steered towards, like, you know, we, in my, this is my opinion, of course, uh, we pasting, you know, um, a lot of weed pasting is considered street art nowadays. Um, graffiti stems from 
really a self-expression, but also getting like your name up you know, okay. in the Bronx. At least when I started, it's all about right. getting your name out in the streets. You know, it's um, I guess in the, during the time in the Bronx and Brooklyn and back in you know back in the 70s, late 60s, you know, it was a form of uh, um, hey, look at me. You know, um, we all wanted attention and didn't probably didn't get it at home or whatever like that. Um, people started painting in, in the streets and the trains. Um, in the Bronx, it was like a war zone. I mean, you guys probably seen Warriors and all the old movies. Yes. So, you know, it was like It's that, actually you know? one of my favorite movies. Yeah, same here. Like, same here, definitely. They're doing that, the remake, they say, but who knows how true that is. I hope. Yeah. Cleon deserved justice, but... Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then you have, you know, the commissions, you know, which... which um, anybody could, could paint it, but it's more... I, I believe it's more, uh, um, you know, uh, school-trained art as opposed to, you know, what was done in the streets and the graffiti. Got it. Um, but I respect everything. I mean, what this is beautiful. Absolutely, you know, this this is a, a God-given talent. And even to, to work with something on, on a scale is, you know, this large, I can never do it. You know, I have I have idea how to do it, but this is talent. Yeah. You know, you know um, what I'm doing, I'll take commissions, but you know, I, I really do what I what I know what, what to do, you know, and it's letters, you know, maybe some animation stuff, but it's stuff that we learned, you know, on the TV show when we were kids or from a comic book. That was art to me, you know, growing up, and that's where I learned from. You ever see the movie Beat Street? Absolutely, yeah. Right. So, the, I, as an outsider looking in, I feel like there's so many unwritten rules around graffiti, right? There is. And I was talking to Mona as well about. Um, how does she feel when um, someone may tag over her mural, right? So walk us through, like, how does that work? Is there an expiration on your graffiti always? Is it, like, a respect thing? Okay, so there are rules. I mean, I don't know if people are aware that there are rules. Um, a tag is what you, what you see everywhere, you know, your name, your signature. Yep. <clears throat> That's, like, the least... Uh, um, but that's like level one. Then you have the bubble letters. Then the feelings that you see. That's level two. Then you have like the straight letters, which is a step up from bubble letters, but a step down from a piece. Which you know it's readable letters. You know black and white. You know. Um, then you have the piece. When you have the full production. Mm -hmm. You know uh, characters and you know multicolored fillings and 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 you know designs in the letters. Um, so. You could go over a tag with with a with a throw up with a bubble letter. Okay. Anytime they can't say anything. That's like the written rule. If you're gonna do a piece over a bubble letter, you're allowed to do that. Now, if you're gonna do something of this magnitude, you know, I think you, you have to let it live. Yeah, you, you gotta respect it. Yeah. You gotta respect art. Art is art. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, you know, um, you have some people who may not agree with me because they're they're like hardcore bombers, and that's what they do. They're bombing. They're writers. They're vandals. You know, they like seeing their name up on the walls. You know, they take it more. They take it seriously. I can't speak. To, I know I I do my share of thing, but I can't speak for that. You know, like because I know what it is to do, be on the both ends. Yep. So um, I sympathize with you know with the people who um, did took hours and weeks and whatever it took, and then for having somebody just put a line or or, or throw it over it, it's, it's disrespectful. Is it? But so you <clears throat> as a graffiti artist as well. Like, is there like, I'm known as this artist here. I have this respect, so no one will ever tag on mine. You have your guys that are like that, and you know, I, again, I can't speak for that. You know, that's that's not me. Mm. You know, just as well as I'm sure there's street artists, um, muralists that just, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna go over this anyways. You know, even though there was something there before, but I'm, I want something. I want to do something over this. Got it. You know, it's just like anybody who just just doesn't have respect or. Or you know, it just doesn't care. You know, they just live by their own rules. But I can't speak for that. And is it so? Uh, I was, um, JC Map uh, had a mural festival here, right? And they flew in a bunch of muralists. Um, they it was beautiful. They had murals all over the city in Jersey City. Um, two weeks later, like two or so murals, like that one giant Obey mural. I don't know if you've seen that <coughs> off of one and nine. Like, 
people tag over it and so is it just kind of like i'm gonna pick and choose based on like i don't like this artist and they don't do anything in the community is it sometimes it leads to that you know us uh, maybe they don't respect the artist for some reason or they don't agree with their views mm -hmm. i'm gonna go over or something just want to get some clout or some type of you know uh, uh attention okay they'll go over somebody you know that's how you do it you know like if you go over a uh, uh I think someone did go, I don't know who did, but if you go like over a Banksy or, or you know, someone like super well known and you blatantly go over them, you're going to get attention. Yeah, get notoriety. Yeah. So sometimes you should do it just for the internet. Mm -hmm. Or the guy who took the freaking uh, the banana off the wall, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> so um, a question that I had for uh, Mona was. Is there like longevity in in mural? So is there longevity in graffiti? Like, do you expect in some cases? You know, um, let's say this guy he was not muralist. He, he just uh, was a hardcore bomber, and uh, he passes away, mm -hmm. and he's respected. People won't go over that because of you know the history or he's deceased. Got it. So there is, uh, there is still, you know, some respect as far as that goes, mm -hmm. but you still see people disrespecting um, rest in peace murals and memorials. That's crazy. Look at what happened with, uh, um, Pro remember that Prodigy mural? Mm -hmm. and they went over it twice. Wow. Then in, in Queens. Ugh, that's... So you know, you always have those who seek, you know, the attention and do it on purpose too. I, I, I feel like. I, well, first off, thank you for giving us perspective into that because, like, I'm sure a lot of people always wanted to know. Um, I guess where does the overlap of rules kind of come to that that T junction, right? Like, well, you know, at, at the end of the day, a street. I think a lot of street artists, they, you know, and now like graffiti has influenced a lot of different, you know, um, styles and you know, and and schools, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Graffiti is, is an American art. Yeah. Brand spanking new. Less than 50 years. Conservatively. If you don't count like the Egyptian, you know, the hieroglyphics. <laughs> but I'm talking about as far as, you know, aerosol catching the tag, your, your name up on the wall, you know? Got it. If, um, I guess, uh, I was having a discussion with my showrunner who's, um, <laughs> he's, he's in the background. Um, do you think that Graffiti is like transcending to something like a newer lane of art like Mona described uh, Graffiti like we have street art, right? And then there's also like a lane of like urban art, right? But I'm also of of the thought that like it's also kind of like typography, right? Like people are kind of shifting it towards something that's innovative new You got it right. I was just talking about this to my my girlfriend um, earlier this morning. It's a uh, um an abstract form of of a font you mm. know um you know manipulation of a letter that's my opinion of you know when it comes to like you know those pieces the pieces and the letters and even even the, the tags you yep. know everybody has a different style where, well i guess for you where do you see it going though like graffiti do graffiti, you think that it could ever become a legal it's, kind of thing well no because of course everybody starts off as a bomber mm. as a writer tag, tag in the streets mm -hmm. Then you graduate, you know. It's been a lot easier lately because of the internet, because you could take shortcuts and look, go directly to the source, see the top of the world, you know, and see what they have, and you know, get inspired or get bite off of it or whatever is, you know, your thing. So, as far as graffiti, when I grew up and what it is now, it's different, but it's already it's commercialized, man. It's all over the place. How does that work and, though? So, like, if I, if I did something illegal and it, it let's say this right yeah let's say i spray painted this yeah and it went viral even though this is an illegal activity i could get so, booked to do yeah. something legal yeah and that's how it happens so you no know, you blow up you you know you go that's what it takes you go viral people dig your shit and then <laughs> you know they, they grab a hold of it and then it blows up you know like oh i want uh, a uh a mona piece in in my city you know then it's right there Direct, you know, a direct call. Got it. No, it wasn't well, like that years ago. That's, that's, that's crazy in my opinion. Um, Technology just I changed the game, man. Yes, yeah. it, but it's it's for me, 
like I, I think about you know how um like the government hires like the best hackers and so like i have to illegally do this to get a job or like facebook hires the best engineers if you get hacked oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's sort of like that but absolutely that that's kind of unfair, yep, <laughs> unfair yep. to me. look at this you got cause which i don't know if people know Every, yep jersey shout City. out to jersey yep everybody talks fucking you know no disrespect to brooklyn but mm. you know he's not from, oh, he's from jersey he's from jersey he's from jersey yeah. Yeah. right here uh. you know and and uh um, Look at him, man. He took a, a, an illegal art and made himself a couple of dollars here, you know? I didn't even think about it like that, but he did, indeed. <laughs> yes, in Brooklyn you know, Music. He blew up when he had those posters up, you know, and those bus posters that he would take him out, he'd take him home with him, mm. and he'll put his little piece, his little art, whatever he did, skull and bones, and he'll go back, put it in because he had the key, boom. And then people would love it, and people would break it to take it out, you know, mm. and original art you know now who knows how much those original joints cost now i know that's uh thank you for that um <laughs> for, for those people who, who who claim cause uh he is from jersey um <laughs> so with that being said mona i wanted to pass it over to you really quickly um after we got the the perspective of you know where graffiti is kind of like trending towards or like transcending um for viewers who are watching or listening out there um, where do you see if like maybe what's some of the advice you would give if someone wants to become a muralist or they're a street artist or um, where do you see um, muraling in general um, transcending to? I don't know. I think it's it's really just just a riff off of what we were talking about before. Just be authentic to what what you feel and actually put yourself out there. Just like you said, like whatever it takes, put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And it's true that with the internet now, that is a helpful tool for a lot of people to get exposure that way and and to get the first uh, you know their first foot in the game, so so to speak. So that's for sure. Also, was just commenting something about like. Um, as the pr perspective like I'm um, as, as a foreigner here you know like uh, graffiti has become such a, a global thing and in places like it's really interesting to see how the like in places like Brazil they have their own font I don't know if you've ever seen oh, yeah, everybody has their style. like uh, everybody has their style and it's it's exactly there's a big discussion right now going on in Brazil it's a place where I spend a lot of my mm -hmm. time like a third of my time these days and um, where there's a big fight over this like on one hand vandals criminals you know all of that but there's a fight about that in which it's starting i think to be recognized as a as a true original art form and just like you said it is calligraphy is a calligraphic original type of arm for art form that is not being accepted because of the Ill illegality but it's it's actually amazing and they've just now doing like official museum shows mm -hmm like breaking down all the regional styles yep, this. of these things like educating the public about the history behind this the and like yeah. the aesthetic behind it because it's intense and it's so unique to each place and i think it's like fascinating so i actually think that um you know in terms of where these things are going what I'm seeing from like my observations here and there is that tagging, as you were saying, like it, that's your entry point, and yes. then the bubble, the bubble, you know, can go on top of that, and the pieces go on top of that. So in a way, like it will be the entry point. That I think that 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 art form is gonna get its due credit soon. Yes, absolutely. It's like by the establishment. Like I think that at some at some point they're gonna have to see this is actual cult. This is culture. This is culture mm -hmm. and just like, you know, and, and finally appreciating that. And uh, I think that's really what, what I see happening for, for no, that. I absolutely agree. And, um, uh, and more that in terms of it, its authenticity and its uniqueness to, to regional differences, more than the whole world copying the North American graffiti style, you know, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I think personally, I think that's a little bit weaker okay. and, and it's, that's completely personal that's just complete but it's more cool when each place has its own twist to it like like they add their own like roots to it you know yes, yes. and like that's that's really really cool got it so a couple things right <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll try to get to every point but yeah. uh same thing goes for you uh sent knowing what you know right with the possibility of 
your work being tagged over or has an expiration date, what are the things that can like motivate you to continue to still do it? It's it's just uh, you know um, I guess it's like the competitor in you, also the the artist in you. you no, know, if you love what you do, you know you just want to create more. You know it's it's an outlet, at least for myself. You know um, I start off just as a, a graffiti writer. You know, uh, thankfully I've met a few people in my life that just now steered me. It's like listen, you're an artist too. Oh, for sure. You know, um, don't just like limit yourself to this. You can do this, or why can't you combine them both? Make it your own little spin off. And you have style. done murals as well. You know, yeah. So you know, um, so that's what I try to do. You know, like have uh, uh, mix my art, my art and my graffiti together, and so I just have my own little spin. But um, it's just like the love. You know, like fine. I know like a piece is not gonna last forever because nothing does last forever. Something get hit up, a, a car could hit it, or something fucking, you know, a wind blows a piece of a, a wall down, or just the, the, the sun itself, man, will, will beat, beat it down and eventually it'll fade away. You know, yeah, you have to touch it up or someone's going to go over it or... <laughs> Got it. Um, the elements. No, I, I, I totally get it. Mona said the same thing. She was yeah. like, rain, wind. Um, so this is a question for both of you, and um, this is from a general like macro um, perspective right because I'm not taking away from either of you because both of you are incredible artists my question is from like the outside looking in do you feel like more people think that graffiti is more expressive more expressive as an art than being than murals and and muralists like do you think murals are more commercialized because let me let me preface it by saying I feel like, um, like maybe, I don't want to say the government, but I feel like the powers that be mm. responded to graffiti with murals, right? I feel like not necessarily. I disagree with that. You, you don't think so? No, I don't think so. No, no. Elaborate. Elaborate. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like, it's, it's, it's just. No, it's, man. It's a I mean, it's the, like, right like muralism has a long history. There's the muralismo mexicano, you know, mm. like the, the sort of like social realist, um, you know, type of murals that they used to do. Diego Rivera, Siqueiros, and all those guys. They were like, you know, social commentary and politically powerful pieces that were not appreciated by all of the powers that be at all. Mm-hmm. And um, there's something like I'm based in San Francisco, and in San Francisco, there is a tradition that that comes from that. So we're talking like the 30s, those kinds of murals. And then there's the whole Chicano uh, muralismo that, that's uh, homebred right there that is more about sort of like heritage of the Latino community and everything mm-hmm. that borrows some things of, you know, the, the social realist big, like the great names of, of Mexico back then, mm-hmm. but has its own twist, its own kind of coloration and stuff like that. And those two are community rooted mural those are not that's not stuff as you're saying oh it's a response to graffiti you know i think there's that really does a disservice to the to the really the community based and the people based uh roots of muralism too as an art form i i agree and but yeah. before you so the reason why i'm saying that is i agree with you too and i, I believe that both murals and graffiti should stay right what I'm saying is, so, uh, just like you, born in Newark, uh, family, uh, I'm from Union, New Jersey. I live in Jersey City for the longest now. Uh, all my family is from Newark, so I've lived there. You know, growing up, all I knew was graffiti. You know, we didn't have murals in Newark, right? Yeah. You see it now, now due to, like, gentrification, yeah, and yeah. that's what I'm saying, as in, like, the powers that be. Do you oh, think yeah. that murals were a response to graffiti to clean it up? In that regard. Both. No. Okay. All right, because, uh, you know, everybody's starting to know that, you know, let's you know, let's invite the graffiti artists, let's do, start making hip, you know, look what happened in Art Basel, look mm-hmm. what's going on in different locations, you mm-hmm. know. You put some murals up, you bring some street artists, you know, it, it brings revenue. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me how, but, you know, it, it just does. Yeah. And, you know, it's been proven, Basel's what it's a how big this, these joints became, became, you know, like so commercialized. Yeah. Why? Because of the street art and the graffiti. Mm-hmm. That's what it does, man. You know, like back then it was a different story, but now it's it's appreciated. 
that well that's why I wanted to get both of your point of views because it might not be a direct response as in like people just do it just because or anything i i feel like people are taking advantage of of where we are uh, and people are are appreciating art mm -hmm. and they're going to like let's capitalize let's commercialize you, you talked about capitalism being uh, <laughs> invincible right? and actually, can i just insert something <laughs> like yes, a thought absolutely. about that whole topic is like one of the things that happened to me as a muralist before uh, happened sometimes that i kind of find unfortunate and kind of slightly resent it's like oh, this mural keeps getting tagged. Can you put a mural on it to... Basically, muralism as graffiti abatement, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, I so resent that because I, I hate this, this um, like, and like that it forces us into an antagonism with the graffiti, which I don't... Like they I try don't to pit you against Like as I was all. saying, I was talking before about like the tremendous respect I have of friends of mine who are graffiti artists and also not just pieces, but like beautiful calligraphy tags and the artistry of that and so like i'm i'm i am just on a continuum as an artist with all these people and i uh, i find it always sad when they go like oh first of all it's slightly insulting to say we need some graffiti pavement here could you paint a pretty thing on there it's like okay like that's the only reason i want me to paint something but mostly i resent this this uh Oh, and over here, over there, there's them, and over here, there's me, and I'm, I'm the nice one, making the neighborhood nice, and it's like, ah, it's like, that's the thing. It's like a lot of my early community murals were were precisely about this thing about gentrification, mm -hmm. and our uh, artists' role in that, you know, and like being aware of that, of how we're being instrumentalized to pretty up neighborhoods for you know the gentry to move in and the prices to go up and and how how we respond to that and i think that's a conversation that i would love to have more often not just with people who do what i do which is more mural but generally all of the people affecting with art our our visual uh environment you know i'm, I'm glad you guys got to speak about that because i have similar you know constraints reservations towards certain things and i'm open to because i feel like graffiti has so much history behind it murals have so much history why can't they coexist and for example um some of the murals you you see here there they were walls that had graffiti tons of it on it mm -hmm. and that's why i'm asking you know sometimes do you think that some people may commercialize it take advantage of it but i think um Street art in general um, is becoming more popularized. And I think that, you know, and the mission of this show, by the way, is to kind of like put walls on how people consume art. And so I want to thank both of you for being able to define what you do and help people. You, you're putting in perspective of, of the art, um, the meaning behind it. Um, I would like to throw a curveball to you two. And because I have both of you here, I want you to think of a question that you always wanted to ask, maybe you're a muralist or vice versa. A, a question that we wish we had? Yeah, here? like I want you guys to maybe, if ask there's something that question? you, yeah, if you wanted to know something specifically or vice versa, I'm, I'm sure you both know muralists and graffiti artists, but hmm. you know, it, it's good to have people from two different backgrounds who do things at scale and um, this is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Like you know, I, I know. I know it's, it's done by grids. So that's how you know, like yeah. you, you do it. But you know, like just like you know, it, it's breathtaking. Well, she oh, actually um, was explaining the grid thank method you. and that she hates it. <laughs> so she no, no, this is a grid. It's it's a doodle grid instead. Of, I hate the the, the, the square, square the square grid. The square so. grid. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. See, no, that's, no, that's I, I've never done anything of this magnitude, but you know. Um, I mean, this is a grid too, you know. Okay. It's just a doodle grid instead of another grid, yeah. I, I would probably be up my alley to do something like that. Cause I, I, I could see, like, you know, yeah. your, your, some of your steps. But it's not that complicated. Anybody could do it, you know. Like, yeah. that's the thing. It's not, not very difficult. It just, uh, you know, what it takes is tenacity. And I think most graffiti artists have that, you know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, we have, our, we have our moments. We sure do. <laughs> you know, um beautiful thank you so much yeah if you guys don't i have a question <laughs> um, and, and we'll we'll close it out for everybody and make like closing uh, remarks but all right i need to know seriously 
how do graffiti artists make graffiti on like the craziest spots spots that are like on the highway where you have to be spider-man or hanging off of something heart guy has some type of freaking uh being you know athletic you know Mm -hmm. climbing all that and because no one's belaying you up there or anything and and, and sometimes someone knows you know has tools you know to kind of secure themselves and, and stuff like that but most part is heart man and i'll tell you it was tough for me to get up here because i'm <laughs> definitely afraid of heights okay i was always the, the the low bomber no no tags up top not too much if i climb i'll go maybe you know a couple of 15 feet up and that's it you know <laughs> it. but uh yeah definitely hard man you got it i always wanted to know too i know people listening wanted to know uh that like I use this as my fearlessness. I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the listener right now, even though I'm doing an interview. Fearlessness. Uh, I love that. Um, and you're fearless as just as well because she told me that the, it moves. Moves constantly up there. Yeah. I'm not afraid of heights. I I, I I told my showrunner, I'm like I'm like a fireman. I just like run up the steps. I mean up the ladders, but I don't know if I, Wait, I, I can do that for hours. Shaking the thing up, pumping. <laughs> Give me your hand. <laughs> But <laughs> shook coming out this last one. Um, I wanted to thank both of you for being on Look Don't Touch. Um, this was amazing. This is one of my favorites. Um, I really enjoyed having both of you in here. Um, any closing remarks that you want to give listeners or viewers in terms of advice, um, potential people who want to start as a street artist, or there's people doing it right now, or Something you always wanted to get out to the world, please um, use this time to do do so. Ladies first. No, 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 you first. Okay. Um, all right, starting off as if you want to become a writer, you know, um, just like learn your history a little bit, try to follow the rules, and then, you know, uh, and you'll be well liked. Um, leave a positive legacy. I'm 43 years old, about to turn 44 next year. You know, my mind has definitely changed over the years from, like, you know, just not caring, being a rebel, hitting everything, and, you know, live you know, live fast, die young mentality. You know, I have two kids now, um, and um, my mind has changed. You know, now it's leave a positive legacy. You know, um, leave good art, good material, you know, uh, just keep up beat, you know. Be on top of your game. Don't give up either, man. You know, just when if you want to become yeah. an artist, overall, you know, it's tough, struggling. You know, mm-hmm. like just to see mm-hmm. if you get a gig here, a gig there. You know, you just can't give up. Mm-hmm. Just keep on going. You know, I, I'm a full believer to do what you love. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, me too. Happiness and self care. Why, why be <laughs> miserable doing doing something that you know you're not happy to do? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. you know, it's a labor of love, but, you know, there's there's a way. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here once again. Like, as you're saying, keep at it. It's like I was saying before, you know, like, uh, people talk a lot about talent, but it's a lot about tenacity and how, you know, just, just keep at it. And, like, if do something that feels authentic to you and insist, you know, just insist on it. And... um yeah, that's kind of, and it's it, it pays off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, guys, um, this is Sean, your self-proclaimed favorite executive producer and sometimes host. This is Look, Don't Touch. Um, I'm with Mona Carone and my guy, Scent. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for It's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you, guys, seriously. Uh,